Einstein had been fighting with Bohr for years by 1935. Bohr kept saying quantum mechanics was as complete as it was going to get. Einstein kept hoping to invent some thought experiment that would reveal the fact that there was more to be said about physics than quantum mechanics could provide. This battle went on and on. 1935, Einstein, with two younger colleagues, Podolsky and Rosen, came up with what they thought was a definitive knockout blow to quantum mechanics that showed that quantum mechanics couldn't be complete. Bohr did not fall down. He struck back. And the battle continued year after year. And it really wasn't until the 1960s when John Bell, a physicist at CERN in Europe, argued that there was more to be said than this. It wasn't just a question of interpretation, that there was actually a theorem to be proven that, that Bell could provide that said that quantum mechanics really was complete and that any attempt to provide a further theory that would be putatively more complete than that would end up contradicting experiment. It's to these developments that I want to turn now. First, briefly, to the einstein podolsky rosen thought experiment, and then, more solidly, to Bell's theorem. Einstein and podolsky rosen begin by saying, a theory must be correct and complete. Correct means what you would expect. It means that it doesn't contradict experiment. Complete means that any quantity that you can predict with certainty in the world must be representable in the theory. If there were things that be, could be predicted with certainty and that the theory had no way of representing, then that theory was judged to be incomplete. And that's what they thought was true of quantum mechanics, that it was correct but incomplete. The experiment could be imagined like this. Imagine that you have an electron, negatively charged, ordinary electron, and a positron. It's opposite, oppositely charged, exactly equivalent particle. And you make a kind of atom out of them, an E plus and an E minus. They're orbiting around one another. They're all bound up, entangled with one another. And that, with some probability, they'll split, and the electron will go one way, and the positron, the positively charged electron, will go the other way. Well, says Einstein, suppose that we measure the momentum of the electron going left. Well, since they started with no momentum left or right, the positron going right must have an equal and opposite momentum to the electron that's going left. So if I measure the momentum of the electron going left, then I know, were I to measure the positron going right, what momentum I'd get, just the opposite momentum of the electron going left. But, says Einstein, Podolsky, and Rosen, Suppose I decide to measure the position of the positron going right. Well, I could have measured the momentum, in which case I would have gotten a definite result, namely the opposite of the momentum of the electron. I could have measured the position. So what's the problem? I can get a definite value of the positron's position. And if I had chosen to measure the momentum, I would have gotten that. So Einstein says the momentum and the position both exist. And this theory of quantum mechanics says that there's no way of representing their simultaneous existence of momentum and position. So they conclude, as night follows day, that quantum mechanics is incomplete. Well, says Bohr, this is entirely illegal reasoning. If you measure the momentum of the electron going left, you've thrown the system into a definite state of momentum. And that means, for all the reasons we've discussed in the earlier lessons, that it doesn't have a position anymore, these particles going left and right. If it's a definite momentum, it doesn't have a position. It's not that we don't know it. It's that it doesn't have it. So for Bohr, Einstein is imagining something that's illegal. He's imagining that you can measure the momentum of the particle going left and that means that the particle going right is in a definite momentum. And you could have measured, as if nothing had happened, the position of that positron. And Bohr says you have to choose. You can measure position, or you can measure momentum. But whichever you do, when you do it, you've changed the system. 
And that debate stood about like that. It seemed to be a question of interpretation. Einstein said, I could have done this other thing. I could have measured momentum, but I decided to measure position. And Bohr says, coulda, woulda, shoulda. You can't reason that way. If you measure momentum, you've destroyed the definite value of position that that right-moving particle has.